about seven or so. Okay. When I was about seven or so, um, usually it takes a, a lot to get children on the drum because we're used, so used to running around and playing with our friends and having fun and uh, jumping around at powwows. So that's that's it. Took me a while to get on the drum and listen. And my great grandfather was uh, really instrumental in helping me learn our medicine ways. So my great grandfather, his name is Ivor Crow Eagle. And he was a co talker during World War II. And him and his brothers often took time to show us ceremonies. And all the time that we've done and spent with him, he had several styles of drums, as you see here. And so some of my knowledge is based in ceremony, some of it's based in modern powwow. And so what I wanted to share with you guys today is what I share with a lot of my students. I, I work with Denver Public Schools, and I'm also a powwow MC. I'm a recording artist with the Plenty Wolf Drum Group. We actually got a Native American Music Award for our CD. I've recorded two CDs with them. Uh, I sang with a drum called Star School Singers, which is based out of Montana, and I've powwow sang with other drums, uh, like Young Buffalo Horse. I sang with those guys quite a bit. Um, I sang with Mile High Singers here. I sang with Plenty Wolf here. And I, I now sing with uh, Big Eagle Singers. And we have a singing class. We try to bring the children in and teach them to sing uh, powwow style and ceremony style as well. So um, I, I've been to many powwows. I have traveled and uh, sang at many different places. Uh, our drum is... Um, also a ceremony drum. So we've been to different sun dances, singing and helping others out. So that was, that's been a, a blessing in my life as well is to sing at ceremonies with uh, everybody, you know, sharing, sharing our ways. So that's a little bit about me. And I just wanted to kind of show some of the knowledge that affected my life. And it, it really enriched me as a person it really gave me a good connectivity with people of all tribes. And it gave me uh, long lasting relationships throughout the powwow highway, basically, and throughout Indian country. So if, if I'm able to share songs with people from a different tribe, I could relate really well to that tribe and I could understand them more. So to me, it's a very powerful thing to share our ways with each other. And with this presentation, um, I came up with a slideshow to show you guys some of the intricacies that a lot of people may not be privy to. And so with that, uh, we'll go ahead and start. So this slide is called the heartbeat of our nation. And so oftentimes when I introduce a drum group, you know, I introduce them as the heartbeat. And um, what that means is, you know, our drum signifies the heartbeat of Mother Earth, of Wakantanka, Tonkashila, the creator, the great mystery. And that carries the people's spirit. So a drum is not just a musical instrument to us, it carries the heartbeat of our nation. And so that's the significance and you know the traditional use can be tracing the beginning of our creation stories and uh one of those stories is um you know i won't go too deep into it but uh, uh the Pawnee nation has a story where the skiddy people they're called they had a, a star and he, he he had this journey he had to go through to create life and the great creator gave him a drum and with that drum, he was able to carry the heartbeat and create people. And so that's just one example. And oftentimes we see drums in their full creation here, but what you don't see is the work that goes into it. And going around powwows and other singers, I've learned, and um, you know, through through many types of learning, even the old ways, if you didn't have a drum, you could make one out of the earth by hollowing out a hole and putting your kills hide over it. And you could create a drum that way if you needed one for ceremony. So a drum is made of wood 
and hide. And to make the rawhide, oftentimes after we have successfully harvested and hunted, the old way you throw the hide into a river and you put rocks on it, and that would take the hair off. You could also scrape it in modern day when people use scrapers. The shoulder blade scrapers were used traditionally as well. When you get the raw hide out of this, you're able to form it and create a drum. Usually the wood, and, and my people's way anyway, is usually made from a cottonwood. And cottonwood is a very sacred tree to our people. We use those for Sundance. And there's a story to that. If you cut a branch off of a cottonwood tree, you'll see a star in it. And that star uh, represents the morning star of creation. So the, the traditionally we'd have a, a, a log and that would be burned with many coals to create the drum hollow and create a bigger drum. I was gonna bring the power drum, but I have a small workspace here. And we have several drums that we keep in our family and in our circle. And in fact, one I was given, I had given a hide to a friend of mine who is the lead singer for Big Eagle Singers. And that in turn got turned over to my stepdad as a wholly made drum. And we continue to use that in teachings. And so the next question was, uh, why do we use it? So again, uh, to, to go to the heartbeat is to signify that that's the beginning of time is the heartbeat of a person. And with that heartbeat, will continue on until you pass. And so the significance of the drum was very ingrained into our culture. And so what the drum means to me is the center of the dance. And I had to capitalize the D on that because now that I told the significance of it, um, it's very important. And in our powwow ways, uh, up north, we have the, the drums around the dance arena. But in the south, in like Oklahoma, they have the drums at the center of the dance. Out east as well. And that kind of signifies the teachings, you know, where we're up north, where we kind of contemporize some things that we highlight the dancers, but in the south and in the east, we highlight the, the singers. So that's another teaching that you may have seen at different powwows from where your travels have led you. And so the drum must be taken care of like family, because that's where family resides. So there's an old story when I was a, a little boy. I was at a big powwow on my reservation in Rosebud, and I see a drum group that I love. I love to hear these men. They're called Red Leaf Singers. And they had a big powwow drum, an octagon drum, just like this. And, but it was bigger. And it was nighttime, and they were hitting the drum, and you could see a blue light coming out of that. And when I asked uh, an older friend of mine, his name is Bert Kilsenwater, he told me that's the spirit of our ancestors' heartbeat. He said that when we sing like that, we ask for them to come and dance with us. So being around the drum carries that much respect. And that's why if you're a drum keeper, you take care of that. Well, here's a picture when I was a younger man. This is uh, Denver All Nation Singers. And um, that's a large group of us at a powwow. And the drum keeper and lead singer was Lionel Steele, and he's like a legend. And uh, some of us here have our own drum group. Some of us have passed on. Some of us have moved on. But this was taken about 2005. So this is a pretty long time ago, but uh, that was our drum group back in the day. And uh, this is to get started on the powwow portion. So the history, the modern powwow is an ever-changing showcase of Native American art, culture, and society. And, you know, it, it, it continually changes. We, we see uh, old style become new style, and the old ways become, you know, the, the really old ways. And so the roots of modern powwows can be traced to everybody's celebratory and ceremony dances. And uh, one of the eldest powwows is from the Umaha Nation, 
in Nebraska. And I was told by very uh, various members of their, their tribe that they're in the 300 annual plus. And when I asked a friend of mine, he said 320 plus is a good number. So they have what's called a, uh, a dance at their, their homeland. And they have tail dancers, and so it almost looks like a regular powwow. And a lot of our people adopted these uh, in the reservation era. But uh, just to see some of these pictures, I really like these. Is seeing the old ones with the drums. And if you see the encampment, you'll see sit singers sitting on the ground. And you know, seeing the drums in that way, the older ones and the ancient ones. You know, I always like to think, man, what did it sound like? You know. How, how did it change so much and how how do we change into what we're seeing now and as uh, we continue our journey um we're, we're gonna go into uh right here this slide is the lead singer and drum keeper and uh that's plenty wolf drum up top we we're doing a performance there and then uh, this other picture here on the bottom is uh i call it my oklahomies we're working with the uh, Oklahoma Indian Center, uh, Oklahoma City Indian Center, and the uh, Tulsa Indian Center. And so, I was with them for about eight years, and I got to learn a lot, and not just from them, but uh, our community members. You know, so spending a lot of time with our community members from the South, I got to learn a lot about their drum protocol, and I got to learn a lot. So, a lead singer is responsible for operating the drum as a whole booking ceremonies, powwows, and honorings. And it's quite a job to do if you're a uh, drum keeper or a lead singer. Sometimes they could be separated, so that's why I separated that right there. And uh, it's the lead singer's job to teach the appropriate songs. So every song has a meaning and, a, and kind of like a background. So for example, if um, we're gonna be singing a prayer song that has to come from a, a different book in your mind. And back in the day, we used to have tapes, but we still would have to think of songs. And to this day at ceremonies, we are not allowed to have anything electronic. So you have to memorize the songs. And oh man, some guys could come up with songs real quick. Others will have to think about it. So that, that's part of the teacher the teaching of being a, a lead singer is to pass those songs down. And as a lead singer, you have to designate your first, second, third, and fourth lead. So say in a powwow or even ceremony, sometimes you have four push-ups per song. And that means you sing a lead and two choruses is a push-up. And you'll have a break in between each chorus. If you want to break it down in, in those terms, you do that four times. Normally that's, that's a contest song. And we want to honor each direction. And when we honor those, that's why we keep it four. And then during intertribals, we usually do seven push-ups. And that is to honor, you know, Wichimaka and Mother Earth and, you know, and Creator. So we, we often sing in four or, or seven uh, push-ups are called. And as a drum keeper, you have to keep the drum in a safe and uh, in location and store it properly and appropriately. And as a singer, you have to um, offer the tobacco and medicine every time the drum is used. And so if you ever go to a powwow and you see the singers take their drum out, you'll see them offer tobacco to it right away. And that's just to offer that to the ancestors who reside in that heartbeat when you, when you ask for a song. And there's also different hand signals um, a lead singer will use to orchestrate the songs. And I could go over those later during the questions and answer portion. And of course, as a lead singer, you have to keep protocol in line with your singers. As we get new people who don't know these ways, we have to teach them certain things. And um, those teachings um, carry a lot of weight with them as far as operating a drum goes. Um, there's certain protocols that you have to adhere by, like not putting anything on the drum. And, you know, the only thing that could cover it is the blanket that it's supposed to be or the drumsticks. And I've had people come and wanted to touch it out of powwow and you have to go, oh, <laughs> you know, you have to kind of 
keep that area sacred for you and the singers and their families only. Okay. So that's kind of the role of a, of a lead singer and a keeper. And um, I really like this picture because it, it shows, uh, uh, again, I like the old pictures like that. It, that that um, type of drumstick is, is pretty nice. I always like that style. There's different styles. I only brought a few examples because this is what we make nowadays. But those big clubs like that are good on tom drums like this. And so to kind of um, show you what the old style versus new is, um, when I sang with star school singers, um, they were Sixica, and well, some of them were blood singers as well. And um, the old school picture, as you see up there, they, they have the old protocol where you had to wear your cowboy hat and a long sleeve shirt. And they have a lady next to the drum. Usually it's uh, one of the singer's spouses or their mom. And, they have her in a position of honor there next to the drum and to have that there is, is pretty significant. And as you see nowadays, the, the picture on the bottom there is Northern Cree at the Grammys. And, um, you know, I've, I've actually got to sing with those guys once and I, I know some of the singers uh, pretty well. And to see them on the main stage is amazing. You know, see our people represented in a, in a mainstream event like that is pretty awesome. So I just kind of wanted to show you the old style and the new just in these photographs. And next we'll go to a song. And um, I would I, I want to play these songs all out, but they're they're pretty long, some some of them. So I'll kind of give Samuel a, a shout out to move on. Okay, go ahead and play this one. This is from the old agency, probably recorded in the 60s and 70s. Sam, I think you have to share the audio. Well, we're fixing the audio. Um, I just want to tell you that this style of singing is, um, it, it really goes back to almost a hundred years ago. And, and as we see it come into contemporary form, um, I've spoken to some elder drummers and singers about this particular song, and they said that for its day, it was pretty contemporary of the old way. So that was generations ago. <laughs> it's kind of hard to explain because we don't think of timelines as, as it's kind of hard to explain the timeline. So the, the, the way the sound is, is created, go ahead and restart that, Sam. So uh, we're going to go through a couple, two push-ups here. So as you see, there's um, a lead singer who leads, and then all the other singers come in and sing one part of the chorus, then there's a break, then there's another part, and that's one push-up. So what you heard was one push-up plus the lead on the second one. And, then, and again, when we kind of gauge this, um, the older singers said that that's really old school, but it's contemporary old school. So it's hard to really, <laughs> to really put a timeline on that. So the song itself was most likely derived in the 20s, at some point generationally hand down and created into the new power format 
when this was recorded, either in the late 60s or the 70s, judging by the sound of it. So it's hard to gauge it unless you're one of the singers who created it and was there or have the copyright of the CD. So even then, the CD could be printed then, but the song was given to their family for generations. So that's kind of old school, and I'll go into generational singers later. And as we go to the next slide, we're going to go to uh, Midnight Express. Next one. There you go. Oh, wait. Did I miss it? Huh. I think um, I gave you the wrong uh, one, the wrong presentation. That's okay. Okay. All right, so uh, uh, I had a little malfunction here, but um, so the new style is a little bit different. I, I could play that later, but uh, there's northern style and southern style. And as you see, the southern singers, they still have their hats and their button up shirts. That's a protocol. They're kind of more old school when it comes to protocols. There's some northern drums that are like that as well, but you'll see more contemporary style singers kind of wear normal clothes, some wear ball caps, some don't. Contemporary singers kind of are allowed to do a little bit more than a generational drum can. So generational singers means that they've been having uh, the songs passed down from generation to generation and the drums themselves are passed down until they're uh, broken or no good. Then they get retired or replaced or components fixed. And that stays within one family. And in a contemporary drum group, uh, I could get a bunch of guys together and we could learn these songs with some powwow singers and, and kind of not make up things our own way, but make songs up that are appropriate to the, to the style of dance we're singing to and create a new song. And so in the powwow way, that's really awesome because we have a lot of contemporary singers in the north. And we have a lot of old style singers in the south. But as powwow continues to evolve, we've been seeing new songs being made. And each powwow has their own song that are asked by the heads of those powwows. So we have a powwow committee asking a particular drum to create a song for them. It's a huge honor for that drum to do that. And so they're given tobacco for that song and they offer that to that drum group. And in turn, that lead singer will create a song for them. They'll even dream and pray about it and, and actually write one out and teach it to their singers and then officially give that to that powwow in a ceremony. So when that's given, uh, every big powwow has a, their own song, which is pretty amazing when you think of how many powwows there are in Indian country. And pre-COVID, there was like some powwow somewhere every weekend, and there was always some big powwow that was getting some good status asking for a song to be made. Oh yeah, this one is really jacked up. Uh, this is a seal skin drum here. And this is a, a paddle style drum. This is from the north in Alaska. So I had seen these singers in person at uh, two different occasions. And hearing these type of singers and the way they dance is pretty amazing. Um, I also wanted to share this with you guys just to kind of give you some exposure if you have not seen dancers from the north, the Yupik and the Athabascan and um, Inuit singers utilize seal skin drums. I did sound like four different presentations there. <laughs> so that's my bad.
So that's an example from uh, our brothers and sisters from the extreme north. And the whole concept is similar. Is they harvest the seal and actually utilize its hide to create a, a drum. And the concept with them is similar as well, is that the dance cannot exist without the drum. And the dancers, you know, and vice versa. So the dancers need a, a singer as well and a drummer. So I kind of wanted to give that example for you guys as well that I thought was pretty amazing seeing that in person and hearing it in person. And again, these videos do not do any of these songs and singers any justice. And uh, if you actually go and, and witness these uh, and live, it's it's pretty amazing and very spiritually fulfilling to to hear these different types of singers. Oh, here's that uh, <laughs> uh, the Midnight Express singers. They're they're contemporary, and I wanted uh, you guys to hear um, how fancy these guys are. So. Uh, some of these singers in here, um, they're, they're pretty famous, and um, some of them have their own CDs. Even the ladies behind the drum, like Tiana there behind her, she has uh, their own CDs, and she's won a lot of awards for singing. And uh, go ahead and play that. It's a pretty amazing drum group from Minneapolis, Minnesota. see that is a um, if you're there in person you could feel that energy from that drum group and everyone crowds around a big name drum like this to get a recording and to see them in, in, in live and in person again does not this video does not do them justice but that's an example of a contemporary uh, drum group a northern style <laughs> Okay, there we go. Here we go. So, uh, again, to kind of go further into the northern style, it encompasses uh, all tribal styles of the north, including Canada. So the video I have here is Northern Cree, and um, before Northern Cree came on the scene, uh, Midnight Express was the hit drum, and there's contests and big powwows, and these guys battled it out for, it becomes a big money thing too, because if you win a drum contest, you're the man, you know, you're the guys. And it's a, it's amazing to see that this is going on while the dance is going on at the same time. And the dancers are all in a contest dance. At the same time, the singers will be in a contest as well. And so the Northern style, they have a high pitch style singing. Uh, there's a lot more contemporary song makers. And usually they have uh, four plus honor beats 
in the second chorus. But as you saw, for that contest song, um, Midnight Express switched it up and did the honor beats in the beginning. And when you're dancing to that, it really pumps you up because they're asking and honoring the ancestors with those honor beats to, to keep up their voices. And, and it creates something I can't quite explain in words. You have to feel it. And uh, some generational singers are ceremony singers as well. So that's kind of, you know, talking about that Northern style. Okay. So that was a little bit of Northern Cree, and as you saw, that's so contemporary. If you could recall back to the old agency style, um, you know, they're, they're from Canada as well, and they're way different. So that's the transition and the, the changing of the styles. And I just wanted to highlight that and show you guys some more contemporary singing. And this is uh, ceremony singing. So like I said, oftentimes you're asked to, to be ceremony singers. And um, uh, this is OK. This was a uh, practice uh, that was filmed. And um, back in the day, you used to be able to buy tapes of ceremony songs. And traditionally speaking, you were supposed to share those or even record. But every drum group had a ceremony CD at some point if they're ceremony singers at powwows. There was a lot of tapes and then it became CDs. And then now as you see, it's on multimedia and this is an older uh, group here. Um, this video is okay to share. I asked uh, permission from some elders if I could share this with you guys. And they said, as long as it's shared on YouTube, I could share it with you guys. So um, you'll see the difference. Is very different in ceremony singing versus powwow singing. So I just wanted to show the difference. I can skip like about uh, 30 seconds into it. Yeah.
can see, um, usually the northern style of ceremony singing, that goes back generations to generation to generation. So that is what a generational drum should be sounding like. And then you can see the vast differences in contemporary. So I wanted to kind of highlight that so you guys could see that. And Southern style, um, it's a blanket term encompassing Oklahoma and the Southwest. And as you see, uh, I've used Kozad here and uh, there's a Kozad family here and they sing the same style and the same songs because they're from the same family. And I've learned a lot from them as well, you know, and uh, sitting at the drum and spending time with these singers and learning their songs. Um, Oklahoma is a lot different powwow wise. Um, the way they dance there is different. The way they sing is different too. And oftentimes, even with uh, the Southern singers, they have their own clan sing songs for their ceremonies. So they're more in tune with uh, generational protocols and they're usually more old style. And as you can hear a Southern song, you're gonna hear it's really bass style singing. And um, usually they do have uh, four push-ups for contest songs, just like uh, a normal contest. And the honor beats are in the middle of the song. So you'll hear the lead, then you hear the first part of the chorus, and then the break, the honor beat there. And they do that differently than us. And, and uh, I can get into that later. And then they'll have uh, the third push-up starts picking up the pace their lead singer will, will sing the lead and then they'll kind of cut it short and they'll all jump in with one voice. And uh, I'd like to share with you a little bit of Kozak. That's the weather is like that, boy. They don't give you bloody nose, they give you bloody nose. There we go. So I just kind of wanted to highlight the Southern style, which is generally, the, again, the blanket term for south of us here in Denver. And of course, we have other styles of drums uh, later in, uh, during the reservation period, we got these kettles and uh, kettle wet drums that became uh, popular down in uh, New Mexico, Arizona area, uh, some parts of um, Oklahoma, and traditionally when you're using the, the um, sacred medicine of peyote during uh, ceremonies, they use these wet, wet kettle drums. I just wanted to show a picture of that. Um, it's a Diné singer named Joe Tohoney. He's, him and his whole crew, they, they sing with uh, Apache fire dancers. So you'll see these dancers usually with uh, Tohoney's uh, singers here. I kind of wanted to show a little bit of this style of singing. Go ahead and play that. So there's actually water in the kettle. All the handsome ones on my right side. <laughs> 
style drums um, usually double-sided and some of them are big I seen some big ones down in the south area towards the you know Hopi and the, and the Pueblos they use the tom style drums for the next slide you'll see the old style uh, sticks they use or again those bigger ones and this is a cloud eagle singers I wanted to show you guys from uh, the Taos oh no your minutes excuse me and uh, Zuni and uh, these singers are, uh, I love hearing these guys. And uh, I just wanted to give you an excerpt of that so, you know, you guys could see kind of the journey we're going on. And I know I'm cutting it short on time here. We get to the next slide. And you see these hand drums here, um, similar to what Sam's drum is here. Um, I've had some myself. Uh, I've broken many singing. Um, these are transportable. You'll see a lot of hand drummers up north, especially during round dances. You'll have all the singers not have be on the big drum. They'll all be on the small hand drum. And uh, to kind of highlight that um, old school versus new school, I kind of wanted to show you a funny video. Nephew. Yeah. Your dad sent me you over here to me. Yeah. Teach you about these songs. Yeah. About these ways. Now, I've been listening to you. There's something about you I don't like. I mean your, your songs, how you sing. So I want to hear you again. You know that AIM song? Yeah, yeah, I know All that. All right. Yeah. You, you, hey, you know it? Yeah, I know it. I know it. Well, sing it. I want to hear you and see how you sing. <laughs> You're singing it wrong. I don't know why you sing it that way. You sing it like this. Now you do it like that. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with you. You're not getting it. Look at me. You're not getting it, nephew. You gotta sing it like this with, with passion. Like that. Can you do it like that? Like you're crying for the people. <laughs> you do it. shows the old school and the new school and uh, 
Dallas Gold Tooth, a funny comedian. We've seen him live here before in Denver, and he's been on Reservation Dogs, a TV show. He's pretty funny. And Tito Yabara is uh, actually on the Midnight Express drum group, and if you could hear him, he's a really awesome singer. So it takes a lot of commitment, many hours and experience to become proficient in, in your craft here. Just like anything else, it's a commitment. And I kind of wanted to highlight that, that there's a lot of laughter at the drum. If you ever go to Powell, you'll see smiling faces all the time until it's ready to be serious. So in conclusion, um, all styles of drumming are direct from our past and the heartbeat carries our present into the future. So I always liked hearing that um, said, you know, it, it, it's a true statement. So I just kind of wanted to share that with you guys. So now's the time for questions and uh, hopefully we have a lot. All right, thank you very much, Stephen. We have a couple of questions in the chat box. If anybody else would like to add questions there as well, feel free or you can also unmute and ask your question directly, whoever is easiest for you. Go ahead and read the first couple that we have. The first one says, how do they pick a song to play and do they know in advance? So oftentimes, like so at a powwow, um, I'm going to say, if we know that there's a, a certain order, an arena director, uh, and if you guys were in the um, a powwow, you'll see he's the man running the show. So he'll tell how you tell the, the drums what order are going to go in, either by personally or he'll let me know to tell them. So say we have a Southern style dance coming up. And we only have like a couple of Southern singers. We're going to shuffle them and it's up to the arena director to appropriately do that unless they can't do it and I have to do it. So I'll kind of tell, tell the drum like uh, Big Cottonwood Creek, for example, I'll tell them boys you're up for women's jingle. So they'll have to prep in their minds what song they need to sing for that. And sometimes it's singer's choice, sometimes it's not. Sometimes a family could request uh, during a special contest certain songs and they have to be designated because there's many different songs per dance style. So that's how it's selected is per dance style normally because it's a contest between the singers and the dancers as well as the singers versus other drum groups. So that's how that's normally done. So it is known in advance, sometimes it's not. So say we have like a, a mix up or something happened where I need to call on a drum for go to, I'll let them know ahead of time. If I need you guys for anything, I'll let you know. And they usually, if they're a good group, they got something in their back pocket they could sing and pick up right away. So that's how that's done. Normally they're told ahead of time what they need. Um, and normally that's the job of the arena director. Awesome, thank you, Steve. And our next question, how do they determine how many sit around the drum to perform? So normally that's done by um, each drum group. So if it's a family drum, sometimes it's just family. Uh, sometimes you'll see people at a contemporary drum where it's all the people have been practicing. And if they're in a contest, they kind of only want the core singers there sometimes. So it's per drum and their protocols. So if the lead singer is uh, wants just the aces there that night, they have to say, guys, you know, the, kick you off to uh, the other, you know, just to the side during contest. Sometimes that's not the case. So it's really a case by case basis per lead singer and how they run their drum. So each each drum is run as its own entity. So it's up to them if they think their singers are ready for a big contest like that, or if they're just practicing say it's at a smaller powwow and they're not on a, a contest but they're uh you know determined that the singers they've been practicing with are ready so it's up to the lead singer and and uh, how he's running it to determine how many people are there sometimes if it's uh if it's open you have people say come sing with us we need more guys you'll see that too and you'll see drum hoppers hopping around and that goes against old style protocols but sometimes in the, the new way we don't have enough singers. We need to help each other out. You'll see that happening too. So it's on based on need and based on the lead singer's uh, approval and their discretion.
Thank you, Steve. And that's the questions that we had in our chat box. If anybody wants to unmute and ask a question, feel free to go ahead. Hi, Steve, it's Christy. I have a quick question for you. Yes. So in that video that you were showing where the young man wasn't getting it the way that the other elder <laughs> wanted it, when he finally gets it, does that do they do like a ceremony for him that he um, achieved that accomplishment? So so that, that skit there was, um, you know, that does happen from time to time. You'll see that in uh, families of generational singers kind of getting after the younger guys for going really contemporary. And so that, that was kind of like a, um, just a homage to that argument. It, it's a, it goes to that um, generational style versus the contemporary. And they're making light of it, but there has been, uh, I have seen families get mad at the younger guys for doing contemporary stuff because the old way is you're supposed to put your heart, like you are supposed to almost feel those crying emotions. And that's why when you see ceremony singers sing, it's so different than powwow. And uh, no, there won't be a, a ceremony for that achievement. That is just um, kind of highlighting the conflict of the old style versus the new style and, in a joking manner. Thank you, Steve. And anybody else can feel free to unmute as well or go ahead and add anything you would like into the chat box. Man, you guys had way more questions for Sid and his teepees than me at the drum. <laughs> so yeah, if you would like, you can go ahead and add it as well. Otherwise, I'll go ahead and turn it back over to Steve. No more questions? Oh man, I was really prepared for this. We have another question. Um, they're asking, what's the woman's role at the drum? So normally, if a lady is asked to sit at a drum, it's usually a family drum. And um, that's based on how their family operates that drum. So for example, I, I could name a drum that does that, and uh, they're all related, uh, usually their daughters. Um, normally, they won't sit at a drum. Uh, in the early 90s, it's very popular in power circles to have the ladies at the drum with the, with the men singing and drumming. So that kind of got phased out later, but normally um, it, it goes to a ceremony thing as well. Women are very powerful. So it, it also depends on um, certain factors where um, I know like when I was doing a lot of traveling, the Diné people, the ladies never touched a drum because it's a powerful thing and they don't want that energy on there. So they would sit behind and in the Pacific Northwest, when I worked with the Kuyu and when I was in Portland with, uh, with a, a grant up there, uh, the ladies had hand drums and they would sing uh, songs to ask to come into port on a canoe journey. So it varies from tribe to tribe, but it also varies from lead singer and how he runs it. And contemporary wise, normally we have the ladies behind, as you saw in some of the power videos, and they're called Wichadlaka, and that becomes a women singing behind the drum. And um, you'll have contests for that. And they'll, they'll also have CDs of those ladies who won those contests. And so usually it's the role of the ladies uh, to sing behind the drum in a powwow sense, ceremony sense. It depends on the tribe, but in our tribe, they, they don't sit at the drum unless they're behind at ceremonies. And um, in some instances, some families, uh, the women will be in charge of the drum business of booking them and helping run that. And if they see somebody getting out of line to kind of keep the singers in line. So again, it varies, but in our way, we normally don't have ladies at the drum unless they're family and unless it's uh, kind of that circumstance. Thank you, Steve. And I think that is it question wise. 
And if anyone has any last minute questions, you can go ahead and add them in the chat as well. So here's a list of just some basic resources I wanted to share with you guys. Powwows in your area. Uh, Google them, look on Facebook, and spend some time uh, learning uh, more about the dances and the powwow songs. Because when you look at, at health-wise, um, our, our singers, you know, have to know these things, but the dancers also have to know the songs as well to, to dance. And that's a, it's a very uh, symbiotic relationship that these things have to go hand in hand. And check out the drums themselves. Sometimes they sell CDs. You support them by buying one of their CDs. And you could you know, learn how each drum group operates by how their songs are, and you can watch them and, and go to ceremony. You know, that's a very important thing for our mental health as well. And, you know, we use a lot of ceremony and you know, normal healing, mental health healing, and check out videos on YouTube. You know, and uh, if you go to like uh, Amazon, you could buy songs from people from different drum groups, different styles. You could buy peyote songs. You could learn more about your own people's culture and their societies and how they're ingrained in the drum just by learning the songs. And then with that, it in turn leads you to dance. And when, the, when you go to that, it goes to a ceremony. So it creates a big circle that some of these drums kind of, uh, you know, kind of show is that, you know, we are a people of circles, you know, and spheres and, and all that's tied together in our spirituality because a power may not be a ceremony, but it has parts of ceremony that are ingrained in it. And that all comes back to the center of yourself. So I, I hope you found what I taught you a little bit more informative of what you may have seen out of power. And that was just a little bit of a journey through the music and culture of our all of our peoples wherever you come from and i encourage you to travel and see that side of other tribes because the more enriched you are in others the more enriched you are in yourself and with that uh thank you guys very much for your time uh just thank you again for allowing me to to come and talk to you guys about some of the stuff that uh that enriched me as well so thank you very much